Yora Church, good morning. It's so lovely to come into your homes this morning through our river stream. Thank you for joining us this morning. I'm Pastor Chris and this is my beautiful wife, Pastor Judy. <laughs> Hello, good morning, good to see you all. Hope you had a great week last week and we are at a different level at the moment and we had Mother's Day last Sunday. We had a great celebration and also I believe you were treated very well and we are going to have a great morning this Sunday. Yeah, talking about uh, Mother's Day, um, I hope you were pampered last week. <laughs> Yes, I was very well pampered and uh, by my husband and my uh, little daughter. That was, uh, that was a great uh, morning. Oh, that's good to know. Well, otherwise, how are you doing? I'm okay. Uh, I'm doing all right because of the changes now that's happening. It is, uh, there's a little more light at the end of the tunnel. So, yeah, I get to see more people. I love to be around people just just if you don't know about me and so it is a huge change now i get to meet be with more people so that's good that's really good I, you would have noticed me each sunday my hair growing longer and longer extending itself so i need to go to the barber first yeah. thing do my hair cut that's a good plan <laughs> well this morning um if you uh so if it's your first time joining us this morning, we just want to welcome you on behalf of the River Christian Church, Pukikoi. Thanks for joining us. Um, we will hope to um, make you comfortable and feel at home and uh, you're going to have an awesome time. It's so wonderful to be in the presence of God. You know, the Bible says where two or three gather in Jesus name, he said that he will be in the midst of us. So God is with us and we are going to have an amazing time. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen to that. I believe that because when, uh, as Pastor Chris said, uh, he is in our midst. When two or three, uh, including us and you guys, he's already there in our midst and he's in your household. He is in your family. His presence is there with you. And I believe that God is helping you uh, to uh, grow more deeper during this time and helped you to uh, get to know him him in a personal way and uh, during this time we it has brought all of us to know him in a closer way and i praise god for his protection praise god for what he's doing in new zealand and um, for the breakthrough he has given us in our nation we need to continue to pray for new zealand and pray for our leaders that god will give them good wisdom uh, let us continue to uphold our leaders and authorities in our prayers amen Amen. That's right. And it's lovely, Judy, if you had noticed, uh, even though if we are not meeting in a church building, but the interesting part is the church is now in homes. You know, people, wherever they are gathering in their bubble, they are just worshiping God. And not only that, you know, there are so many people who are watching, you know, they just go through the uh, Facebook and boom. Okay, hey, I'm, I might like to watch this one. Yeah. And how I always believe, you know, we what we need to do is just plant the seed and God makes it to grow and God waters it and makes it to grow and God orchestrates everything yeah. in such a beautiful way. All we need to do is just plant the seed. That's right. <laughs> and it's so amazing, you know, like uh, so many people tuning in and watching us and uh, people are being blessed uh, it's really wonderful uh, to see uh, lives being transformed amen i believe that mm. god is touching lives we are hearing testimonies people send us texts or messages to let us know how they are being blessed thank you so much continue to let us know that we will know what god is doing in your life and we like to if you want us to share it with the rest of the church or for other with other people we are happy to record your testimonies and share it with others 
Yes, and right now, why don't we move on to birthdays and anniversaries? And happy birthday, Mike. Tomorrow is your birthday. I believe your family is going to spoil you. And they have many things planned out uh, behind your back. Have a blessed birthday. Yeah. So um, if you had celebrated your birthday or anniversary in the last week, uh, we want to wish you a happy birthday and of course a happy blessed anniversary and here comes that song for you. <laughs> morning during the service we are going to have communion so if you find some time uh, to go and prepare the elements for the communion that will be great even if you do not have everything that you require that's all right it's just a piece of bread and a, a little bit of juice is all you need it's just a, a, an emblem for us to remember the death the burial and the resurrection of Christ so yes it find some time to go quickly prepare communion for your whole family Wow, that's going to be exciting that we're going to have communion. Well, every Sunday morning before uh, our 10 a.m. online uh, service, at 9.30, we have a River Kids program that is run by our Kids Church Pastor Jennifer. Along with them is the lovely Morton's uh, children, Analia and Jaden. As uh, I said before, it's a very interactive program. The kids will love it. And it's really uh, very engaging uh, for the kids to be part of it. So you can tune in at 9.30 a.m. either go into the Facebook page or even uh, to the YouTube uh, you can just type in the River Christian Church and boom there it will be that's correct and also we do have River Youth that happens every week so please do contact um, us in this email ID so we can connect with you and give you the zoom details so that your children can be part of the youth it's an amazing youth uh, ministry that's happening even throughout the lockdown we, uh, we they were able to connect with each other they uh, the kids would love it so uh, do contact us and uh, um, it's really nice, uh, Judy, how even during lockdown, how um, the the kids, uh, the youth, and then even the adults, they they just get connected uh, during the week. You know, you were mentioning about the youth and uh, they don't feel like, oh, I miss my friends or something. They always uh, get connected and uh, they have a wonderful time talking about that you know even now um, on Wednesdays we have our connect group and this is also through Zoom we meet each other find out how they are doing during the week have a little bit of laugh and uh, ask them what they're doing and um, of course the very important thing is meditating upon the Word of God as uh, the details uh, they are down below here you can uh, uh, take the details and if you like to be part of this connect group that happens every Wednesday at 7 15 please let us know and uh, you can always be part of the connect group yes we just finished a series called resilience and we've started a new one also last week we had fun we had some games we had so much of laughter i believe uh, if you be part of the connect group you're going to enjoy it so feel free to join us you can join anytime and uh, you can uh, talk you can share and we can um, talk about our ups and downs our struggles and our victories our wins and losses so do connect and join and we can have a lot of uh, fun together and of course we can pray for you Yes, we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's pray. yeah, yeah. That's it's kindly, you know, upholding each one and praying for them. It's so important and vital during this time. Amen. Hello. You might have wondered what we've been up to during the uh, 
the lockdown. We've been um, delivering food. That's what we've been doing. So at the beginning, the, uh, the bakeries let us know that they had a uh, countdown. They let us know that we they had extra some extra stuff. And uh, we've put, we've been picking up uh, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, uh, and throughout the week whenever they had extra. So what we do is we typically pack, we, we bring those breads and stuff here, we stick it in the freezer, and then what we do, we have, we get calls from families, needy families, and we pack, we pack for them. So we put it in the freezer, we make sure it becomes hard, so it doesn't squish when you put it in the bag. And then as we get calls from families, we typically pack maybe two or three breads, Sometimes we have sweet stuff, sometimes we don't. But typically we pack breads, a couple of bags of buns. Some of the families have uh, lots, lots of kids, so the buns tend to work really, really well. And uh, you know, we give each family, typically we give them one bag. Large families, sometimes like two bags. Large families, I mean, meaning large families like 10 or 13 in a family. So we give what we have. There's a constant flow, believe me, a constant flow. It never stagnates. The stuff in here typically churns about, I'd say about twice a week. So uh, yeah, and that's what we've been doing. We've been dropping off, keeping our distance. During the uh, height of the lockdown, we would put the bag in front of the door and we would uh, knock the door and run away. So uh, yeah, and as the lockdown lifted, we started, um, started again talking a little more with the people and interacting a bit more but yeah we've been busy at this time we're going to watch an interview that pastor peter did this week with simeon brown who is the mp national mp for Pakaranga, Auckland, and he is a Christian leader and a positive voice in our nation. It's a great privilege that we could hear what he has to say. So let's watch. Hey, everyone. It's a great honour and privilege uh, for us today to have the MP for Pakaranga, Simeon Brown, with us. And Simeon's joining us from Wellington uh, today as we're talking. So thanks so much for joining us, Simeon. Well, uh, thanks so much for the invitation, um, Peter. It's great to be here. Hope you're well. Yeah, it's certainly been a, 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 an amazing time over this last little while, hasn't it? Um, you know, just oh, it, it, it really has been. The last um, two months has been crazy. Um, we've all been locked in our homes. Um, we're probably all feeling a bit of cabin fever, wanting to um, see people. Um, but look, it's great to see some of our freedoms being um, coming back. Um, and I think you know. As a country, we should be proud of what we've achieved, um, being able to stop the spread of this disease. And you've got a, quite a unique viewpoint, I suppose, in terms of your role in society. Um, I mean, how would you say that you feel that New Zealanders have responded to COVID-19 generally? I'm very proud of what New Zealanders have done, but I also know that it's come at a huge cost. Mm. And um, one of those costs is economic. And, so, and the other, you know, also there's social costs there really has been an impact. And I suppose, too, um, in a lot of ways, uh, there's been an impact to date, but there's still much more of an impact mm. potentially still to come. Yeah, no, that's right. And um, shutting down our economy for basically six, seven weeks uh, is going to have an enormous impact. Shutting up borders, not allowing people to visit New Zealand. Tourism, that's our biggest export in a $45 billion of gross domestic product. Um, we're not going to be getting much of that. Um, our international education sector, that's another $5 billion, that's that's gone. Um, so we're going to feel the cost of this for many, many years, and um, it's going to be our grandchildren who'll be paying for this. And there's going to be, you know, huge social ramifications, um, and you know, it's going to rely. It's going to need um, the community and churches um, to play a really important role in supporting people through this. There'll be people who lose their jobs, people who lose income. Um, there'll be people who have mental health challenges and issues um, who will really struggle. Um, you know, and that's going to and that's going to require everyone to continue to support each other. So, um, for you, I mean, 
you basically came into um, the, the the Pakaranga area in 2017. That's right, eh? When you uh, that's right. You were elected in 2017, so you've obviously got a strong Christian faith. Um, how have you found being a, a Christian in this political arena, and particularly? Mm. Yeah, no, it's a fascinating. It's a fascinating um, two and a half, almost three years now that I've been an MP. But um, you know, it's important that Parliament represents um, the community, and there's an awful lot of Christians out there, and so it's important that there's Christians in Parliament. And um, so, I guess from my perspective, it's great to be a Christian in Parliament and to be able to um, bring that perspective to the Parliament, to the laws which are being passed. Um, to the conversations and the policies which are developed um, within our within um, Parliament, but also within my party, the National Party. My faith informs my views on these issues. Um, it, it, it uh, you know, around the value of life, um, the value of the unborn child, the value of those who are old and who are sick and who are dying, uh, and um, and it calls on us to have compassion, but also to protect. Uh, and so those pieces of legislation do great against. Um, my values, um, which are informed by my faith, and um, it is very—it's it's saddening to see it happen. Um, but at the same time, I, I came to Parliament and I made it very clear that uh, I would be someone who stood firmly on my conscience, uh, and I would um, and vote according to my conscience on these issues. And so I know that but not everyone in the Pakaranga electorate agrees with me. Uh, but at the end of the day, I've been elected to represent the electorate, but also to represent my conscience on conscience issues. And when it comes to things like this, actually, I mean, this is this is very topical stuff. But I mean, effectively, what is in your in your viewpoint? What is the most effective things that Christians can be doing when we're seeing things like abortion, euthanasia, um, marijuana bills, things like that coming through? What what's the most effective thing that the church can be doing? Um, to- well, I think I think there's a number of number of ways to have influence, um, and I think a Facebook rant's a good one. Um, but it's it's uh, so I'd, I'd never discount a Facebook rant because I, I do a lot of those myself. Um, and I'm sorry if I've inflicted those on you because you like my page. Um, but if you haven't liked my page, you should like my page so that you can be inflicted by them. Um, but there's 65,000 people in the Pukaranga electorate. Um, I don't get 65,000 um, emails when these issues come through. Uh, and that means, you know, so I think it's important that MPs um, hear from their constituents. I think, you know, your vote at the election is an important an important um, uh, thing to think about. And, you know, you've seen how MPs, your local MP would have voted on these issues yep. and they have a track record. And I think it's important that um, you consider that at the election. If you believe in a, um, a political viewpoint, get involved in that political party and have influence. There's so many so many ways to get involved in a political party and I'm not advocating one over another. I'm just saying get involved because it's important that Christians are, are, in, are engaged. That's fantastic. Hey, look, well, thank you for that, Simeon. We really appreciate your time uh, with us today and uh, we'll certainly be praying for you and thank you. cheering you on as uh, you continue to make a bold stand in the arena that you're in. So thanks for spending the time today and God bless, mate. Thank you so much. Take care. We're going to take some time to pray. His word says in Jeremiah 29 verse 12, then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. And this is the promise of God. When he says, when you come to me and when you pray, I will listen to you. And this is what we are seeing a lot of breakthroughs in our nation as as we come together and when we pray together, things move. God is doing changes. The whole atmosphere is changing. He's listening to our prayers. Let's take some time and pray this morning. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. Thank you for the privilege you've given us as a family, as a church, that we could come before your presence and we pray. Lord, this morning especially, I pray that your incredible measure of your presence will be poured out in our midst. And 
each one of us as we are coming out of this lockdown we will continue to walk in your presence we will experience the power of your presence and your relationship in a more closer way lord as your word says in the last days i will pour out my spirit upon all flesh lord i pray that you, this is the time that we are calling out to you and that your presence and your anointing will be poured out in a greater measure the latter rain will be greater than the former rain lord i receive those promises and we bring those promises before you and we ask that your grace will be released in our midst lord i pray as you are the vine and we are the branches we will continue to abide in you and i pray for those who are hurting financially and remember the families who have lost their jobs or looking for a job your hand will be upon them lord your provision will come from above lord your jehovah jara god who meets our needs and who provides lord i pray that you will provide for the families who are going through financial hardship and you will bring comfort you will bring the resources and the wisdom and ideas and creativity during this time so that they can step up into this new season with creative ideas and they will ac accomplish everything that you want them to accomplish in Jesus mighty name i pray amen 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 we just agree with that prayer and we believe that god is going to do great things well this morning we are going to spend some time in worship one thing that i love very much is worship you know the bible says in first samuel chapter 2 and verse 2 there is no one holy like the lord there is no one besides you there is no rock like our god and then in psalms 105 one it says give praise to the lord proclaim his name make known among the nations what he has done you know when we worship the lord we declare his praises we declare his goodness when we praise the lord we tell the world how big our god is our god is stronger Our God is mightier, and there is no one like our God. I love to worship. So wherever you may be, I just want you to feel free to raise your hands, lift your voices, and let us worship the Lord. Oh God, you have to 
I hope that you've all been going really well over this time and been making sure to use this time to, to take care of yourselves. Because if there's one thing that I've found with this whole quarantine and with social distancing is that it's really important that we all make sure that we're all doing all right and we're all taking care of ourselves. Because the thing is, we're designed for communion. We're designed to connect with each other, and God gave us all of these virtues like connection and love and patience and generosity. And I think it's really important that we remind ourselves during this time who we are. Because we, we as a church, we're a people who are generous. We're a people who desire to give, who desire to invest, and who, who desire to explore new connections. And what better way to do that in the house of God than... To really give everything we've got. When it comes to giving, so often we, we look at it as it's just our money. Or it's just our time. But it is so much more than, than both of those things. Yes, it includes them. But it, it is so, so much more. So much greater than we could realize. Because when it comes to giving, God didn't design us just to, to occasionally give our time. Or yeah, or or occasionally give a few dollars out of our out of our what? That's not what he had in mind. You see, what God had in mind was where the church was a body of people, and we have the opportunity to be part of this body. We have the opportunity to be part of something so much greater than ourselves. But the thing is, what's implied with us being part of this body is that we give our lives to it. That we give our all. So we give our trust. Our love. Our kindness. Our generosity. Our heart. Everything that we have, we give. Because that makes us part of the family. That makes us part of this body. Because what God has in mind is he wants to be able to connect us. He wants to be able to commune with us. And to do that, we've got to be open. We can't just be willing to... Give a little bit here and there. We've got to have our entire hearts open to God, not just a little bit of our wallets. You see, what I'd like to encourage you today with church is that when we think of giving, don't just, don't think about it as giving money. Don't think about it as, as volunteering your time. Think about it as being part of your family. When you're part of a family, you don't hold anything back. You don't think in your mind, oh, I'm only willing to give this much time or, or this much money or this much of my love. No, when it, when it comes to a family, it's all in or all out. And what I'd like to, to encourage and what I'd like to remind us all during this time is of who God made us to be, and that is God made us to be part of this body, to be part of something greater than we could ever imagine. God has, has given us this opportunity, friends, so I'd just like to remind us. We've got this moment. We'll, we'll we remind ourselves every day that 
This is part of our family, that we're investing our hearts and our lives and our resources and everything that we've got in this family, in this communion, in, in God. I think during that time, during during all of all of this, everything that's going on lately, I think it's really important that we do remind ourselves of that. Because it means that we're investing in our future and we're investing in those relationships. And it's the connections that last forever. It's it's not just the, the little momentary things. It's not the, the little speck of time that we might give. It's what lasts forever is the connections that we make. And if the connections take our entire openness, then, then so be it. But this is our family. And that's what God's got for us. At this time, we are going to step into communion. If you've got your elements ready, maybe the bread and wine, let's prepare our hearts to come before the Lord and remember what He has done for us on the cross. That's where our victory is. Get everything ready as Pastor Chris leads us into song and we can worship and prepare our hearts and let's do communion together. It's your blood that cleanses me. It's your blood that gives me life. It's your blood that took my place in redeeming sacrifice. Washes me. of God the first covenant he made with Abraham it involved a lot of work but the second covenant he says this is the new covenant in my blood he took all the work on himself and he says just do this in remembrance of me as you do this as you take part in the communion the body that was broken for our sake for our sin and the blood that was shed for us 
we can do this in remembrance of everything that he has done for our sake the deliverance the victory the healing the breakthrough everything that he has earned for us is ours now can we close our eyes and say lord i thank you i receive it in jesus name as we take continue to worship let's take part in communion together my privilege to introduce Pastor Lyle to you. He's an amazing man of God. He's going to bring God's word. Whenever he speaks, he speaks from his heart and he's so authentic and he is so real and it's so lovely to work with him and he's so funny and um, he's such an amazing man of God with humility and um, it's our privilege to hear from him. He's going to speak to us from 1 Peter chapter 2. So be ready open your hearts and receive what God has for you this morning. Hey everybody, as we make our way through this series in 1 Peter, we come across a section in scripture in 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 13 to 25 that at first glance to our modern minds appears bewildering and befuddling because here Peter uses some words and some phrases that don't make up our modern vocabulary. He talks about emperors and slaves and beatings and pagans. So just from the beginning, I think it's good to clear up some stuff before we delve into this piece of scripture, into the section of the Bible. First off, Peter is talking to a world that's completely different to ours. has a different way of government, a different societal structure, and a completely different cultural language. Also, it's important to remember that when slavery is talked about in the Bible, it's not from the same understanding that we have about slavery. And nowhere in the Bible does 
scripture condone slavery as we would understand it i think it's best to kind of clear that up because some some of those things can be stumbling blocks and trip us up as we try and get into this piece of scripture peter in this letter to the gentile christians he calls them a particular name he gives a particular name to them he calls them exiles and foreigners He does this to illustrate the point that when these people have become Christians, their allegiance is to a different king, a different king to Caesar. Their allegiance is to the risen king, to Jesus. And as such, their allegiance to King Jesus and to his kingdom has completely different value system than that of the world that they are in at that time. So it's important to remember that from the very beginning because that's the bedrock, that's the foundation upon which Peter builds his exhortation to us in 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 13 to 25. You see, Peter is saying because you belong to another kingdom, because you're exiles and foreigners, you belong to a different kingdom, you belong, you have a different allegiance, you have an allegiance to King Jesus instead of to Caesar. You belong to this whole new value system of that kingdom. And as such, you're going to act and behave and live and dwell and have your being in completely different ways to the people around you. So you're going to act like a foreigner in your environment. You're going to act like an exile in the world in which you live. And so because of that, Peter is saying that we need to have a different way of living. We need to cling on to those values, those deep values of the kingdom, these deep beliefs of the kingdom, and act a completely different way. He's calling for us to posture ourselves in a completely different framework. He's calling us to an alien posture. Some of you may know that uh, a few years ago I was made redundant. And some of you may have experienced that and some of you may be experiencing it now. And for those who have experienced it, it can be a very hurtful, humiliating and head-messing experience. And for me, the added pressure or the added dynamic to that was before, during and after I experienced... uh, bullying, threats, and some spiritual abuse. I had leaders within that that organization who had said that I was part of the future of that place, not return my calls. I went and told my dad about this, and he said, well, the perpetrators of this, the people who did this to you, perhaps we can get some dog poo and throw it onto their... Uh, front doorsteps and uh, I think he was joking I think he was joking but um, I gotta admit part of me really wanted to do it to get some smelly dog poo and leave it on their doorsteps do the you know like the chuck and dash but then I realized that I think so often we get the whole justice and revenge thing kind of mixed up and um, justice is a good thing going after justice is a great thing but revenge is a poison that you think you're giving to someone else but you're drinking it and it's killing you and that's what i learned in that process and it was a a very painful kind of confusing process but through it i learned that the way that i got real healing from the hurt that that caused was to love and to pray for the people who had caused me pain who had hurt me and humiliated me. And it ended up when people that knew, kind of knew about the situation and knew the players and knew me, came to me to ask me about it, kind of maybe asking for goss and and kind of caring as well, would come to me and I'd explain. I wouldn't, I wouldn't excuse the bullying or the threats or the spiritual abuse. I'd explain what happened to me. But then I'd defend the perpetrator. I'd give an explanation, not defending what they did, 
but defending them as a person. Explaining that they were under huge pressure, that the decision they had to make um, caused them to act in this way, that this wasn't normal for them to act, and actually they were good people. So I ended up defending the people that hurt me. And that's the kind of posture, that alien posture, that one that flies against what society would say to you. Oh man, you've got to sue the pants off them, you've got to destroy them, you've got to go after their reputation, you've got to hack them down, you've got to do whatever you can, get your revenge, just go for it. It flies in the face of that and it turns the other cheek, just like our master Jesus did. And it's interesting because this section of scripture, First uh, Peter chapter 2 verses 13 to 25, often it refers, often people go to it to refer to how we should treat people in authority and leaders and things like that. And why that emphasis is there, I found it interesting when I studied it today in verse, in verse 17, it really popped out to me that it's not just about leaders, but it's about everyone. Peter talks about having respect for every single person that you come into contact with. It's not just people in authority that we should honour and respect and love. And why should we do this? Why should we have this posture towards other people? Because it's the posture of our king. It's the posture of the one who we follow. And he will empower us to live that life. He will empower us to even if our boss who's stressed out yells at us for no good reason. Even if our teacher tells us to move away from our friend and sit somewhere else because we're being so noisy. And it wasn't actually us who spoke. Even if it's our parents telling us to eat our vegetables when our sister or brother haven't, hasn't eaten their vegetables. Even in the face of that, we're not to go, we're not to respond in anger. We're not to respond trying to hurt the other person. We're to respond in an honourable and a loving and a respectful and a hopeful way. I was speaking to a friend today. And so often this kind of happens to me when I'm preparing sermons. That first off, God really convicts me and goes after me, which is a good thing. Um, and then a friend or someone will talk about aspects of my sermon. It's really weird how that works. Anyway, he told me how he had done a business deal with someone before the lockdown. And then he phoned them up to talk about that business deal. And the guy went absolutely off his rocker at him. Really kind of nasty. And my friend, he said, you know, there was this split moment where I wanted to give it to him, you know, full barrels, guns blazing, just totally go after him. And he said, I just felt this real check in my spirit not to do that, to respond in humility and love and in honor, in spite, just in spite of how he treated me. And he did. He said, I'm really sorry if I've offended you. Really like to apologize if I've done anything to, you know, like annoy you or, you know, disrespect you. And this guy responded. He said, I'm so sorry. There's no reason for you to apologize. I've just been really stressed out. My business is failing. I'm going to have to lay off staff. I don't know how I'm going to pay my mortgage. And my friend in that moment had the opportunity to love on him, to share God's love to him, and to just really encourage him and to be a friend. There's going to be really, there's going to be heaps of these kind of situations crop up in the coming weeks and months ahead as people are just stressed to the max, at max at the end of their tether. Um, their pockets are hurting. Don't know how to pay. They're going to pay their rent. Don't know how they, don't know how they're going to pay for food. Put food on the table, and we have the opportunity to respond in two ways: to respond as they respond, stressed out, um, full of anger, um, full of venom and hatred, or we can respond the way that our King responded. We can choose to have an alien posture of responding with honour, respect and love. Peter says in this section of scripture, he says, you know, it's great. And this is the um, Lyle version. You know, I'm paraphrasing. He says it's great if you respond to persecution and suffering caused by someone else and you kind of deserve it. It's great if you respond in a good way to that. But it's even better if you respond to 
undeserved persecution or um, pain or venom that's thrown your way. It's, it's even greater if you respond in a really loving, honourable and respectful way to the person who's dishing that out to you. Why? Because that's how our king responds. That's the way of the kingdom. The way of the kingdom is to turn the other cheek. Even though Jesus didn't deserve what he got, he didn't say a word. And, and like I've said so many times before, if we look to Jesus just as an example, it'll crush us. But if we look to him to strengthen us, that when we face these situations where people are really having a go at us and we don't deserve it, if we look to him for our strength, he will enable us to live a life, to respond in a way that honors that person that loves upon that person, that respects them, that shows them that they are a precious human being created in the very image of God. And as Peter says in this piece of scripture, they will see the glory of God. They will see who God is because of the way in which we respond, no matter how they treat us. So today, as you go into your weeks, as um, the lockdown has changed, as the world starts to go back to some form of normality, I just really want to encourage you to take the beliefs, to take the values of the kingdom of King Jesus. Don't respond in a negative way. Don't respond how the world would respond to tear the person down when they're tearing you down. Show them honour, show them respect, show them love, and show them hope. Bring an alien posture to them. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you that we can meet, even if it's over uh, video. God, I pray that you would allow us this week to posture our lives um, and our response and the way that we interact uh, with people in a really honoring way that would honor them as the daughters and sons of you, image bearers of the Creator, so that they would be able to see your glory, your hope, and your, and your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to bring the words of knowledge for this morning. If any of you who are going through some kind of pain in your jaw, this is what the Lord has laid in our hearts to bring it before you. So if, if you're going through some pain in your jaw or if it is connected to your tooth, so please go to this connect page. You will find the Zoom link. Find Get the Zoom link and connect with the prayer people they have somebody is there to pray with you and pray for you and also there's someone who's having problem in your in your skin some skin issue or problem in your scalp so if if that is you please do connect and contact someone to pray for you or even if there is some other need that you were touched by the word and you want to receive some prayer please do connect also if there is anything else that you need to get prayed for please do connect and we are happy to pray for you that was a really encouraging word and thank you for sharing it to our Pukikoi church i believe as we have been blessed uh, everyone watching they would have been blessed this morning really encouraging thought-provoking and especially talking on uh, 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 the book of peter uh, every time you know when i hear that i'm so encouraged <laughs> that's right and especially the word uh, from uh, chapter 2 verse 20 the second part it says when you do good and suffer for it you endure that is a gracious thing in the sight of god 
for uh, for Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example. That really touched me because uh, when we when we do good and when we suffer for it, God is saying it's a gracious thing in the sight of God. That means I'm, I can expect more grace that that is going to be released mm -hmm. from heaven on my side. So uh, this is something that when that we can hold on to, and also Christ is our greatest example, and He did good. There, even if people did not take it well, he continued to do good and let us um, continue to um, do good, not uh, go weary in doing good, as the word says. So let us not grow weary in doing good. Whether people receive it or shut the door at you, it doesn't matter. But from your end, let us continue to do the right thing in the sight of God and receive more grace and more grace over your life. Amen. 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 You know, I was just, um, uh, uh, I was uh, noticing every Sunday after the service, there are words of knowledge that are being spoken. And later on, at the end of the service, through the Zoom meeting, people call up to be prayed for. So what's happening there? That's right. During the week, our prayer warriors, the prayer people, they pray and seek God's face and to speak words of knowledge. So when they send it to us and when that is released during the service, uh, people can contact us. And a lot of people have responded based on the word of knowledge that is released during the service. So as you see this details below, you, if you contact the uh, connect with us at the connect page, you will find a Zoom link. And when you can contact us through the Zoom link and there are people waiting to pray with you, to encourage you, speak words of wisdom and um, prophetic words if you require or if you need someone to pray for you. They are waiting there to pray. That's really good, Judy. You know, the, the one that you said that people are waiting to pray for you. And it's really encouraging. You know, we, it's not uh, the services, uh, the online services finished. That's it. No, we still continue. We wait and then we wait for people to join the chat and then we pray for that. That is really encouraging. You know, over the last few weeks, I've uh, noticed people uh, calling up and being prayed for and how they are being blessed. If you have family or friends, you can let them know or even on their behalf, you can join the Zoom and we will pray for them. Is that right? That's correct. You can contact us on their behalf. What you said was good, Chris. That's correct. You can, even if they cannot contact us, you can do, do it on their behalf. We will pray and we will stand in agreement with you. Amen. So don't wait. If you need a prayer, as, as we come to a close this morning, the information is down below. You can just connect and we will pray for you, either for you or your for family or even for your loved ones or even for your friends. Well, this morning, thank you for joining us and especially a warm welcome to those who have connected with us for the very first time. If you had joined us halfway, I am Pastor Chris and this is my wife, Pastor Judy, and we pastor the River Christian Church, Pukit Koi. Once again, thank you for joining us this morning and stay tuned and I, we will see you next week at 10 a.m. and at 9.30 a.m. it is the Kids uh, River Kids program. See you then. God bless and have an amazing week. Amen. Have an amazing week. God is with you. He is for you. He's not against you and have a blessed week ahead. Bye.